Well, hello and welcome back to the Way to Native Chronicles. What we're doing today is, uh, you know, let's uh, take a little uh, closer look here. We're going to be melting up some lead. And uh, what we want to do is uh, blend this alloy. So I have some clip-on wheel weights and I have some uh, linotype. And I also have uh, some 50-50 uh, bar solder. So what I wanted to talk to you about today was how to blend alloys and how to do this stuff efficiently because I see a lot of videos on YouTube about how to do this and you know frankly they often spend way way too much time on this topic. I got see guys uh, slugging through these pails of wheel weights and they're trying to uh, separate all the zinc ones from the from the lead ones and steel ones and then once they do that then they want to uh, separate the uh, stick-on wheel weights which are pure lead from the ones that are clip-on and you know there's uh, I can sympathize with that that you know you want to do a job right but I've been doing this for a good 40 years now and uh, to tell you the truth a lot of it is is wasted effort and uh, over the years I've just streamlined and streamlined my process until now I'm actually at the point where um, I uh, just throw all the wheel weights in that I get in a bucket. I don't separate them at all because the zinc and the other crap is going to float to the top anyway. Just skim it off. You're way, way below any melting temperature of zinc, so you don't have to worry about that. But the one thing I used to do was I would uh, uh, separate out the the stick-on wheel weights from the clip-on ones because uh, you know the stick-ons are are pure lead. But in the distant past, back in before in the 80s actually, I used to not even separate that. So, uh, and actually the results turned out good. So this last time I kind of figured, well, why don't I just uh, stick with that again? And uh, I'm just not gonna bother separating out the uh, stick on wheel weights because, you know, <laughs> it's a lot of work. I just threw everything in and and I, what I want to do is I want to ju just kind of give you an idea of uh, what the actual impact is of not separating things out and, and spending tons and tons of time. Because when you look at the details and the numbers, it's pretty insignificant. So, uh, you know, I'm kind of distracted here a little bit. Uh, I hope you don't mind. Uh, I'm going to put this drone down <laughs> and uh, uh, get it out of the wind. It's just a blowing around back and forth. And... Uh, 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 we'll go inside. I'm going to show you some of my notes on how I how I do this. So, uh, catch you in a bit. Okay, let's take a look at some of these numbers. Then, see, just uh, get a feel for how much uh, the various approaches of removing sticky wheel weights from the batch of clip-on wheel weights makes when it comes to the type of alloy that you'll get once you're mixing in uh, uh, alloys like uh, linotype and 5050 bar solder. Now, this uh, what we're going to go over here is I'm going to give you a little bit of an idea of of how you can calculate these values if you're a bit unsure how to do that. I know there's online calculators, but it's nice to be able to do this stuff yourself too, right? So uh, you're going to find out in this portion here of the video exactly how we do this kind of stuff. Um, and be able to apply it to your own needs. So even if you're uh, using just pure lead and want to mix it up to get it up to uh, like 2% tin content that's better for casting, which is usually the recommended minimum is about 2% of tin, uh, then you, uh, you'll you have the knowledge at your disposal to figure this all out from scratch yourself because I, I've got the specific uh, weights of all the of the uh, alloys that we're going to be dealing with so uh, let's just get started here and uh, now what we're looking at on the screen is uh, a uh, um, a multi-page view of of a booklet that i maintain now that's uh, this booklet here you can uh, see it printed on the screen but this is sort of how it looks and what i've basically done is 
over the years, and I mean over 40 years, I've been, I just collect data. It's not like it's ready to be in a published form or anything like that. It's just for me. And uh, I just jot down things that uh, I might need to be reminded of, uh, especially if you put down the... Uh, the hobby for for a year or something like that, and then you get back into it. It's nice to uh, get yourself right back up to speed and know exactly how you were doing things. I have all my reloading information in this little booklet. So what we have on the screen here right now is the bullet casting section of this booklet, which has you know multiple sections in it. And if you are interested in maintaining your notes like this. Uh, including right down to the printing of them and and cutting the pages, making your own drawings and entering in mathematical formulas, the whole shebang. Uh, I do have a video on that. It's quite an old video, but it's uh, it gets the information across, and I'll put a link to that in the description of this video. Just as a side note, if you like what you see here, uh, I find it very useful because this is an electronic form. I can. I can edit any of these notes. I can add pages to them. In fact, I have uh, just today for the purpose of this video added in a new section into here. So you can just edit it, modify things, correct things, and then reprint the pages. Cost nothing to do, right? As long as you got a printer. And then pop those pages in your book. Then you have a hard cover, copy uh, that's always up to date. So, what we start off here on the top page, top left hand corner, uh, have the uh, table of contents. And uh, uh, what I want to do is, I want to go start off by going to page 12 here. So, casting techniques, recipe for 80 bar batch. And uh, just to begin with, this weight uh, and volume per bar, that I, uh, I'm not going to go into how I got to this figure. That's shown in the other pages, but winds up being uh, about 2.705 cubic inches per, per ingot that we cast. So, and that's using that standard Lyman ingot mold, right? So if we pop down, keeping that figure in mind, 2.705, if I go down to page 21 here, what we have is the uh, most most recent alloy that I put together that's March 2023 and that was using a mixture of uh, ingots that were made purely out of clip-on wheel weights so I have 20 72 bars of clip-on wheel weights I have nine bars of linotype and then I have two pounds or two bars of 50-50 solder and I just want to show you just kind of roughly, we're not going to go, you can pause the video and look at these figures uh, more carefully. So I'm going to just kind of quickly skip over them. But uh, basically you can see I have the breakdowns of PB is lead, SN is tin, and SB is antimony. So that's the percentages of those three elements in uh, wheel weight alloys. And then you have your linotype which has got quite a bit higher percentage of tin and uh, antimony. And then 50-50 bar solder, which is just 50% tin and 50% uh, lead and no antimony. So, you know, when you, when you take a formula like this, this one up here and you mix it up in those proportions, what are you actually getting? So that's what these figures here are for. So if we start off with this one where I take the 72 bars here and uh, I can calculate that out using that figure on, on page 12 here and uh, I can figure out that that is uh, 12 bars is 194.76 cubic inches. And looking at the percentages of lead, tin, and antimony, then I can break that down, right? By just multiplying uh, 0.955 here for the percentage or the fraction and getting my three volumes of these elements. Now, the reason I'm doing this by volume is to be more precise. I don't know if you really need to be the, this precise, but might as well if you can because when you're talking about alloys and their percentages of 
uh, elements in the, uh, to make up an alloy, what you really are talking is about percentage of volume, not percentage of weight. Because, you know, the, the weight of, uh, of antimony and tin is way lighter than lead. So if you do do it by weight, then you're going to wind up with a very different uh, a composition or a calculated composition. So we have to do this by uh, volume. And if I want to know what the vol composition is, I'm going to have to do each of these uh, each of these portions is the nine bars of linotype next, and then the 50-50 solder next. I'm going to have to do them by volume. So, okay, so nine bars of linotype, that's its volume, break it down. And then I have, I'm going through this first one a little bit slower, um, just to start off. And uh, so there's our two pounds of 50-50 solder. When I add those, all those volumes up, then I get for that what winds up being 81, 83 uh, pounds for a batch that I make up from, from this mixture. That is the total volume in cubic inches of alloy that th this formula is going to produce. And um, from that, I can also see what the percentages are of each of the elements. You've got your lead, tin, and antimony. And from that, then I can figure out, we're going to skip over here. Well, I, let's just wait for that. From that, I can figure out what the percentages uh, of the elements are in the alloy that I create. Now, before we go to the uh, comparison, I'll just quickly mention now what, what happens in this next section. Here I have my March 1986 alloy components. So like I mentioned, I've been keeping track of these uh, 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 this da data for quite a few years. And in that one, I actually didn't mix, uh, separate the uh, stick-on wheel weights from the clip-on wheel weights. But if I look back further up at my notes, then I, can then I find that uh, when, I, when I did do the separation of them, that I had 40% of the mix was uh, stick-on wheel weights, and 60% was the, uh, the clip-on ones. So that's why I have here 40-60 mix, 60-40 mix. So here's my clip-on wheel weights and stick-ons and of course if we go over here you know stick-ons are 100% uh, lead well we'll just call them 100% or 98.6 or whatever and uh, the clip-ons are like this pre the previous calculation and then in this case I'm just taking the uh, the stick-ons as pure lead and working out their volume and then doing the same thing that I did previous with the clip-on wheel weights using a new volume with uh, 72 bars, 60% of the 72 bars consisting of clip-ons. So, and then the rest is like I did before here, you know, we work out our total volume, which is the same as before. And then when I compare these two, then you can see that first, the one that I just uh, made in 2023, where I used only clip-on wheel weights. Here I get a tin content of 2.2%, antimony of 4.8, and the remaining of lead. Whereas back in 1986, when I just didn't bother se segregating the stick-on wheel weights from the clip-ons, uh, I wound up with a 2% tin content which actually isn't all that bad. That's, uh, you know, you're still getting your 2% tin, and as far as I'm concerned, that seems to be kind of my minimum anyways for, for good castability of uh, when you're using this uh, alloy. Uh, the antimony is quite a bit lower, 3.4%, uh, but so that affects hardness a little bit. You may not be totally happy with, with that. Um, and so, when we compare these two approaches here, I thought, well, let's just throw in one, one more alternative. Let's suppose that because I'm using more clip-on, uh, stick-on wheel weights in this, um, in what I just mixed up today for a base alloy, uh, let's say if I, instead of using 72 bars, 
Uh, let's see. What if I use 71 bars of uh, the wheel weight material, which is 40-60 mix of stick-ons and, uh, and the clip-ons, and then in uh, instead of 9 bars of linotype, I use 10. So this just gives you another alternative, and uh, you know, we don't have to work through all this stuff here, but what I wind up with is over here. Uh, conclusion, modified alloy. So I could bump the, the using a, uh, another bar of uh, linotype brings it the tin from 2% up to 2.1% and brings that, um, that antimony level from 3.4% up to 3.5. Now, considering the value of, of linotype, I call that a pretty poor economy. Uh, so you'd have to add quite a bit of uh, linotype to get to boost that antimony up to the 4.8 percent that uh, I was getting when I just had pure stick-on wheel weights without any clip-ons, uh, uh, without any stick-on ones. Uh, the clip-on wheel weights are an excellent source of antimony, in other words, and uh, I think it's probably hardly worthwhile uh, trying to bump it up with linotype. You might want to look at a different alloy. So what I've been using lately, by the way, is um, Rota Metals to get the linotype because uh, it's just... Uh, I used to get linotype pretty easy, but it's not so easy anymore. So you're, you're paying money for linotype and you want to keep that down. I, in this, the case of this last batch, I made all the wheel weights came for free, so that's good. But I did have to buy the 50-50 bar solder and the linotype. Now, if you were, uh, a lot of people have uh, free access to, to lead or very cheap access to lead. So I encourage you to uh, consider, you know, how, uh, what, what you're going to get if you, uh, mix in a few uh, alternatives using a, just straight lead and mixing in, let's say, some hardball uh, hard alloy or linotype or something like that from Roto Metals. If you're looking at some of the various types and you know what you're after in terms of antimony and tin level, uh, you can pump these, uh, pump these alternatives into the, these formulas here and uh, come up with an answer for yourself. So, uh, the, yeah, the basic uh, premise of this video was to just take a critical look at uh, how important it is to spend a whole lot of time removing the stick-on wheel weights from the clip-on wheel weights. And uh, I hope you found this useful. And if you did, yeah, give me a like and uh, catch you next time from the Way to Native Chronicles. God bless. Did you like this video? If you did, I think you're going to like this one right over here. So check it out. And I appreciate your subscribing if you haven't done so already. Remember to do that while you're watching this next video. Click like. It all helps us out for this channel. Catch you next time.